Hello friends, welcome back. Massimo Anim here once again. Today, I'm totally excited because I'm bringing a brand new tutorial for all of you guys, which is about building a RESTful API using Spring Boot. So I'll be going through all the details on how to set up your project and how to build a product catalog API to do the basic operations, creating, deleting, modifying, and querying products. Okay, let's deep dive on it. In order to set up our project, we will need a few things. First of all, we'll be using Spring Boot version 3.0.0, which is the latest version or known as the generally available version. Also, we're going to use the JDK 17, which is the LTS or long-term support version. Also, we'll be using Maven as our package management and building tool. What we're going to do is we're going to create a RESTful service or RESTful API, and we'll be doing a few actions. We'll be creating something. We'll be getting a resource. We also be modifying something. And lastly, we'll be deleting a product. This application is gonna be a kind of product catalog. We can just add, remove, update, and list all products we have. We'll be using the Spring Initializer web application to create our project structure. It will give us everything we need to start our application. First of all, let's choose to use Maven and the language should be Java. We could be using something else just like Kotlin or Groovy, but this example will be done in Java. Next step is to choose or to pick the Spring Boot version, that's 3.0.0. Now we can enter our metadata information. Let me add a default package here, artifact ID or the artifact name, that's gonna be RESTful service. And we can give it a beautiful name. This is the final package name that we will have. Next is to choose the packaging type. We are picking jar because that's a more modern approach to package and deploy the applications and also Java 17. The last step here is to pick all the dependencies we want to our application to have. And in our case, we will only be needing the Spring Web because this package here has everything we need. We could be building a web application or RESTful application, which is our case. Let's pick this one and we are good to go. Now let's generate the application. It's gonna generate a new package here, RESTful service, which we have it here. Let's extract this package and we have all the project structure and initial files we need here. Let me open with my IntelliJ. So here we have our project in IntelliJ. This is a standard Maven structure. We have source, main, Java folder, resources, and test. In the main folder here, we have an application class, which is the entry point for our application. That is why this class takes this special annotation from Spring Boot that tells the framework this class is the entry point for our application. Let me rename this class here. I like it to be simply application instead of something more complex. So it looks good. There we go. We have it now. Let's just give it a run and try our application. Oh, good. You can try hitting something there, but it's not going to work because we don't have anything defined yet. Let's start coding our application. First we have to do is to create a controller that's gonna be the entry point for our application. Let me add a new package called controller. It's always good to separate those concerns, controllers inside their own package. Let me create a product controller and this is gonna be the class that's gonna enable us to manipulate everything we need from the HTTP standpoint. Now let's give it a REST controller annotation, which means now we're telling Spring Boot this class will be a handler for HTTP calls. And as we are asking REST controller, we'll get everything via JSON by default. So let's do a quick test here. Let me add a get mapping here, which means we will be able to simply get something to the root folder and let's create another method saying hello and simply return something like this a string saying hello world. If you run it again and try, now let's give it another try. And there we go. We get here a hello world port 88. Nice. This is not what we want to do. Our end goal is to really operate on the products that we want. For that, let's just delete this one and let's create another method. We're going to say post method for product. We're going to receive a new product here and that's going to be public string create product. And what we want to receive here is a product specification, and then we can do whatever we want with this product. Now, let's create a new product, a class product. This class is going to be inside the model package. This class is going to have a few fields, string ID and a string description and also a big decimal price. Big decimal is because we need to 
use decimal places. And this is the class that will give us that capability. Next step is to create a constructor for our product class. Again, we have to receive those parameters and we also need to bind them to the instance variables. Big decimal and price. Now I'm going to bind those values. ID saves ID. Description receives description. And price will receive our parameter price. We need to have accessor methods to manipulate or to read this data. Let's create the getters. This class will be read-only. Once you create, we cannot modify. Back to our controller. Now we have the product and we can simply say that we received the product and return something back. Say we could return the product ID. Let me simply uh, hard code something here. One special thing we can do here is to add a request body annotation. This annotation will automatically bind our parameters into this object here. Spring gives us that for free as well. I'm going to simply print the product we received here so you guys can take a look. And I'm also going to add a to string method here simply to help us to debug and to see the result. Looks nice. Let's run our application again and should be able to have a slash product endpoint. I'll be using Postman. I'm going to try a run a get against product and I got an error here because I don't have a get to a product yet. So there is nothing there, but I do have a post and I need to pass a body as a JSON. I'm going to pass a new product that's going to be a laptop and that's the price, $205 and 77 cents. Once I pass that, it works good. And we can see the product here. Of course, ID is no because we are creating a new product. We only have description and price. This looks nice, but I really want to change two things here. If you guys notice it here, I'm simply returning this thing as a string, as plain text. And I'm also returning a status code as 200, which is not right. Once we say post, we should be returning 201, which is the proper HTTP code as we can see here. So create, which means a post we should be returning to one created. The first thing here is let's change the response here. I simply don't want to send a string back. I'm going to send a custom class back. Let me add a new package model here and let me create a class called product ID. This product ID will have only one field, which is the product ID that will be returning to the client. And that's all we need. Now we can start using that class and then we return result. That's not the only change because we have to change the response to a response entity. And that's going to be a product ID type. This is what we want to return back. And we also have to change the result here because that's going to be a response entity dot get status we need to send a status code as created and the content type media type application json and the body that's gonna be the result which is a product id we're not using anything here let me just put that system on print again back be using the product here and that should be good enough let's run it again and we will see the result it's running let me clear my command line and let me run it again that's it are receiving the uid as a json and they start is created. Let's do the remaining stuff. Let's fill in the other methods. Now I will, we want to also be able to get all products. So we need a get mapping product and public list product. Let's simply return a list of products in here and that's going to be get all products. So we, we're going to simulate returning all products we have inside our catalog. Result new radius. Add that to my imports. Let me simply create a um, new products here. It's gonna be one, and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for the other products. I'm gonna simply return three products. The only thing we have to do here is to return the result. And Spring Boot will take care of everything else. It knows we are returning a list of products. It will generate a JSON back to the client. So this is a default behavior from Spring Boot. Let's run again and also execute our Postman code. So it's get me all products. It's a get and I send and this is what exactly I get back a list of products. So we've seen two methods so far, post and get. Now let's do the other methods. We need another get mapping. Let's say we want to retrieve a single product. We don't want all products. So get product by ID. And final string ID. So given the, the client passes us one single product ID, we can simply return them something else. 
let's simply print here, which was the ID they passed us, and let's return a new product. Then that's all we have to do here. So we are simply receiving a request via this mapping here, and we have to add a path variable here because we need to receive this from the path and annotation here, which is path variable annotation. So what Spring is going to do is Spring is going to inspect the path that we are going to send. We inspect any variables. Whenever it finds it, it will bind automatically to our method parameter. Let's see how it works. And let's run it again. If I simply change here to one, two, three, that's it. It hit my get product by ID and I'm returning a single product here. And this method receives an ID that comes from my URL path, as you guys can see here. That's exactly what I'm printing here. Nice. Let's keep going and do the other methods as well. So right now we have a method to create, which returns us a 201. We have get all products, that returns a 200 with a list of products. And we have another one for getting a single product. Now let's create a new method here. It's gonna be patch. This one is gonna work whenever we want to modify a single product. It's gonna be public void patch product. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to send a full and valid product. And then we are going to use this product to retrieve the existing product and also to replace or update those two fields, which are description and the price. I'm going to simply print here what we're doing and we don't need to do anything else because that's the only action we need as we're receiving patch with a body. I'm going to do a similar thing for delete. Instead of patch, that's going to be delete. And just like uh, that get, we will need an ID because we really want to delete only one product. We don't want to delete everything else. It's gonna be a path variable again. And final string ID. Let's print the ID and we should be good to go. Let me simply do a few things here. That's all should be final. All of these variables, do they all look really good? I'm gonna simply run a full test on this API. Let me run and we'll be doing all of our tests. Let's now create a new product. As you guys can see, I'm creating a new product. This is a brand new UUID and the status is 201. If I keep creating, every time I'll get a new UUID. If I get all products, I'll receive a JSON with a list of all available products and the status code is 200. Likewise, I can try to retrieve a single product and I will receive a single product here. The last two actions we can do is to update something. Let's do a patch now. It's going to be a patch to products and then I need to pass a body here. I'm just going to pass the same body for the get product saying I want to change or I want to modify that product and that's going to be an awesome product. The price is also $1,587 and 14 cents. It all worked now. I have updated that item here. As you guys can see, I'm, I just received a 200 after I used patch and you guys can also see here the product I printed out. Last step is to run a delete. It's gonna delete the body that's also expecting JSON, but it's time we're going to send an empty JSON here and let's hit send again. All good, the response is empty and the status is okay. And that's all for our demo here. We have created a few methods here. First, we want to create a product using a post mapping that's expecting an HTTP post, likewise for get mapping or getting all products. Also another get mapping to retrieve a specific product patch for updating the product and delete to delete the product. I hope you guys have enjoyed my tutorial. Please do not forget to like this video. Also click on the subscribe button and on the notification bell. This way you'll never miss my videos. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.